do some lightning fast coding. In this lightning fast coding, I want to show you how we do testing in this course. Because testing, well, you're going to start hitting testing in everything you do. So let's look at how we do it. Now here's a project I prepared earlier. What I want to do is I want to write a, a top secret function. A function used by spies around the world. It's going to take a message and convert it into a secret message. Now, the problem of taking a message and converting it to a secret message is a big problem. So in our normal computing way, we're going to break it into subproblems. And we're only going to solve one of the subproblems now. And the subproblem we're going to solve here is how do we convert one letter in the plain text, we call it plain text, the original message, into one letter in the cipher text, one letter in the encoded message. And the code we're going to use is diabolical, and I, I don't want it to get out of this room. It is export protected. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the letter A into the letter B wherever it occurs. And the letter B into the letter... Oh, you've heard this one before. Okay. <laughs> and the letter C into the letter D and the letter D into... And it's just going to be like that all the way to the letter Z. And then we're going to turn that into A. Well, you've mastered it. Okay. So, here we are. Here's, I've written some code to do it. I'm going to read in stud.io, stud.lib. I define a constant called first letter, which is the first letter of the alphabet, which is lowercase a. Last letter, which is lowercase z. Let's assume we don't encode uppercase letters, just lowercase letters. I need to have a function to tell me if something's a letter or not, because if it's not a letter, I don't want to encode it. In fact, I really should call it is lowercase letter, because I'm only going to encode lowercase letters at the moment, because we don't have time to do uppercase. All right, so that's a prototype of the function. Where should I put all this stuff, by the way? In the header file. So let's do that. Where's my header? Yeah, let's go back. Good. So that's all done now. Put it in encode.h. Here's my main. I've got a character called plain text, a character called cipher text, a uh, prompt saying enter a plain text character. I'm going to scan it in. I'm giving it the address of plain text, so it's going to sneakily go to that place in memory wherever it is and write it in there once it's read it from the keyboard. Then I've got a function here. Uh, I've got something that goes uh, a letter to be encoded. That's. Ah, okay. Is it to be encoded or not? It is to be encoded. If it's a letter, it's not to be encoded if it's not a letter. So I'm storing that yes, no value in to be encoded. And then I'm going to check. If it's to be encoded, do the encoding. And here's the encoding. Take the ciphertext and add one to it. Because a character is treated a lot like an int in C. So you can do arithmetic operations on it. It's treated like really an 8-bit int. So I can add one onto it. That's fine. And that will give me the next letter in the alphabet. If, after doing that, it's greater than the last letter, then obviously I've got to a Z and I've added one, I've moved off past the last letter, then I better make it equal to the first letter. See, I haven't used magic numbers anywhere or magic letters. I've given them constants like first letter and last letter, so we can easily change the alphabet and so on that we're operating this on. If it's not to be encoded, then the ciphertext is just the same as the plain text. And I want you to print out what the encrypted ciphertext is. All right, let's build it and go. Thank you very much. Oh, now it's got two warnings, and the warnings in particular are... Implicit declaration of function is letter. I didn't write is letter. Is that right? I thought I put that in dot .h. I did write is letter. That's confusing me a little bit. I'm just going to copy it in here and see what happens. Let's move it back. No point staring when you've got a program. Make changes and see what happens. Oh, it's happy now. Oh, it didn't include encode.a. Oh. What have I done? <laughs> I, I might not have told it that they're in the same directory. I might, it might have stuffed up with the actual setup when I quickly created these files initially. They have to be in the same directory for it to find it. Uh, I would have thought I'd have got an error message. Anyway, don't worry. We will sort that out for the next lecture because I'm glancing at the clock and I only have six minutes. So... Now I've fixed it. Oh, I'd better copy it all back in then, I guess. I'll probably need it all. Oh, no, I was happy. Very strange. It was happy. It wasn't complaining that those guys didn't exist. I wonder if it's just grumbling, if it's giving me any... Sometimes the error message you get doesn't really summarize the error very well because there is a problem that I haven't yet 
although I've declared that function, I've told you what it's called and its input and its output, I haven't defined it. I haven't said how the function works. Uh, that's missing. So maybe, although it says it's looking for a declaration, maybe it's really looking for a definition. So why don't I do that? Int is letter. How do I know if something's a letter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is indeed a letter. Letter. Oh, no, I can't call it letter. Is. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I've run out of words. I wish I was a human theosaurus. Alpha. I guess. Um, okay, it's alpha if the letter is greater than or equal to the first letter. Thank you. Or, and here's how I say or, double bar, or the letter is less than or equal to the last letter. Now, alphas, I've combined two expressions. It's going to compare these two things, and this comparison is a Boolean comparison, so it's returning a 1 or a 0. It's going to compare these two things, and whether it's true or false, will return a 1 or a 0. And those two 1s and zeros, or zeros, will be combined with the OR operator. And OR behaves just like you might expect. If either of them are true, then the whole thing is true. Uh, yes, thank you. I don't want an OR. I want an AND, which is double ampersand, which means I simultaneously want it to be greater than the first letter, and I also, at the same time, no doubt about it, also want it to be less than the last letter. Thank you very much. And now I'm just going to return. Now, the reason, of course, I was struggling there was it would be far easier just to return the whole expression directly. Okay. It's encoded. It's, oh, there's my little icon. It'll show me what's going on. Lecture three example. Enter a plain text character. What character are we going to encode? And what am I expecting to get? Encrypted is Y. Okay. So what did I just do then? I just did a test. Is this a sensible way of doing tests? Me typing stuff in and watching what it does? That's not bad if I'm exploring, I guess, but suppose I'm going to be working on this code for a week. And every time I change something, I'm going to be nervous that I've broken the program. I guess I could have a big list of all the tests to run, and every time I make a change, I could manually type all the tests in one at a time and look up to see if they've got the right answer. But that means I'm doing a lot of similar work over and over again. Who's good at doing a lot of similar stupid work over and over again? The computer. Who's bad at it? People. So we should get the computer to do the testing. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, my main function's a bit big, isn't it? Look, what does main do? Main reads in, prints out, and it also computes in encoding. That's sort of doing a couple of different jobs. I think a function should only do one job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip out all the encoding stuff, and I'm going to put it in a function called int encode. Not int. What does it return? It returns a char. Which takes in a plain text and returns a cipher text. And we better say char Okay, now I've got a function that does it. Can you see, that was quite a convenient thing to do, uh, except I have to declare that function somewhere. I'm going to declare it in here. Oh, that was a problem before, by the way. It was giving us a wrong error message, and everything was all right. That's good, so we can get rid of that. All right, so I've declared the function. I'm about to use the function, and now look at my main. Does it look much neater? It's only really doing one thing. Main is really now just the sort of wrapper around all the work, and the work's happening in a function called encode that is specially designed to encode. What a... That's a really convenient thing to do. It's very nice to have a whole lot of work happening in one place and give it a good name. So I'm going to say um, cipher text equals encode plain text. And now if I wanted to do it again, I just have to call the function one more time rather than having to copy all those lines to do it twice. And if you wanted to do it three times, 
instead of saying this, then that, then that, I can just go function call, function call, function call. So function calls are very convenient for a whole range of reasons. Let's just check that this works now. Now, enter a letter. My test case was X. Was that a good test case? What do you reckon I should test? Z. Woohoo! A, it worked. Okay. So now the nice thing is, now that I've got encode in a function, before when it was buried inside main, it was hard to test. It all happened with reading and printing on the screen. It's very hard to see how you could automate that. But now it's inside a function, it's very easy to automate. So in fact, I'm going to write my tests. And my normal habit is, I haven't been doing it till now because I haven't told you about it, is I always write the tests before I write the function. And I call the function, I call the tester the same name as the function. It doesn't return anything, it's a void, and it's called void test encode. And it takes nothing in. And what it does is it does some tests. And it asserts that everything's okay. It says, uh, and at the end, if it gets to the, if there's an error, it's going to assert and fail. And if it gets to the end, it's, it's just going to silently get to the end, and that means I've succeeded. And if I've succeeded, what does that mean? Is that good? Yes. And you always say, you are awesome. Oh, it's missing an E. So you're not quite awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> and you put lots of exclamation marks in here because this is the most exciting thing in the world. And it's actually really fun when you're programming. Every time you make a change, you just run the tests again and it prints out, all tests pass, you're awesome. And you think, woohoo! And you go on to the next thing. And it turns this normal painful experience of programming into a series of someone complimenting you all day long. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. So all I'm going to do is my tests, and my tests are simply assert. So I simply assert that encode of A, what do I expect that to be? B. I notice chars go inside single quotes like that, and strings go inside double quotes. You've seen that? Okay. Let's have some more test cases. What else? Z should go to A. And what's another test case? Uh, yeah, capital A shouldn't be encoded at all, should it? Numbers, that's a good idea. Thank you very much. What should uh, 7 go to? Shouldn't be encoded. Okay, now I just click build and go. Oh, actually, I better define testing code. I'm just going to put it at the top for now. And I'm going to... And I always run my tests before I do anything. So I just normally stick at the front of main all my tests. And every time I run main, it runs my tests silently for me. Here we go. Oh, and I don't, I don't need the voids. I don't need the void. And we're using insert, assert, aren't we? So I better put assert in. Woo! And it ran. And what does it say? All tests pass, you're awesome! And then it does the rest of the stuff. Please enter a character. It's in the boring, normal land of running the program. But before the program runs, the first thing it does is run the test. And every time I write a function, the first thing I do is write a test. And I hook it into that chain of tests up the top. And that means whenever I do anything, all my tests run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. See you next week.